Hey guys, Nature from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles, back at Sonic Academy for another series of tech tips. This time around I want to be focusing on workflow enhancements, so anything that's going to save you time and get those ideas out of your head and into the DAW as quickly as possible. This first video I want to take a look at some essential key bindings, um, custom setups that I've put, uh, done in my um, templates that uh, really helped me out getting my ideas out as quickly as possible and speeding up my, my process. Let's dive into the DAW and check that out. Right, let's, uh, let's get started and um, open up Cubase's uh, key uh, editor. Uh, so we're looking in the edit menu for key commands. Um, so I've got a couple uh, that I want to just run through that are really handy for me. Um, some of these do actually overwrite uh, default commands in Cubase. Uh, there's a lot of default ones as well that I do use a lot that you should definitely, um, you know, spend some time learning as well. But I want to look at just the sort of custom ones that I do um, set up for myself. Uh, the first things first is I try and keep everything to the sort of left hand side of the computer or of my keyboard, just easier that way to kind of get to stuff without moving around uh, looking for keys and I can pretty much work without taking my eyes off the screen. Um, the most important ones for me are the grid shortcuts that I have set up and these apply the um, quantize settings to my grid up at the top here. Um, I have these set to the QWERTY keyboard. Uh, so first thing we're going to go and look in here for uh, a specific function we can type in quantize. I hit search and you'll see if you keep hitting search it will scroll through every entry with quantize inserted into it. And here you can see my mappings, the Q W E R T. I have that set to one, uh, one whole note or one bar, sorry, uh, quarter notes because that's where my kicks generally are. Um, 16th notes, obviously that's, you know, I work a lot in, in 16th notes as well. That's kind of an important one to have uh, on hand. 30 seconds and then I skip the 64ths and go down to 128 for really fine, um, fine uh, details. Um, how to assign these, you simply just choose which one of these you want. Hit the key that you're looking for and hit assign. So with these uh, QWRT commands mapped, um, you can see now just by quickly uh, grabbing my QWRT, I can move around very, very quickly. It's very easy now for me to kind of just drag in at a bar. And Cubase does have a, um, a dynamic uh, grid now that you can use, uh, much like Ableton. But I still prefer to do it this way. Sometimes when you zoomed out and you want to get to 16th notes, they're um, not available to you because you zoomed out too far. So then you have to zoom in to be able to get that um, that resolution. Uh, from here, I can easily just hit 16th and get those where I want or make really fine adjustments again all the way down to 128th like that as well. Uh, so that's the quantize grid settings. Um, these will obviously apply to the note editor as well. Uh, let's check out the commands again. Uh, the other one that I use a ton is the bounce command. We can check that one. Bounce selection. Now, in Cubase, bounce selection is not the same as rendering your audio. Uh, this is merely to create a new file from your selection. Um, this does not apply. Uh, unless you've got offline effects applied to it, it does not uh, render your inserts and stuff. And this is really handy when you've got little um, bits loop like this and you want to create a whole file from that. You can just hit bounce and replace. Just one key, it will just create a new file from those. The same goes for uh, F7, it is the direct um, processing. If you have processes, let's say, uh, a reverse process add to this to make that permanent um, to basically reset the offline processing that you have here you can hit bounce as well that will create a new file and you'll see it's now made permanent on that file okay so moving on from bounce um, another one that's essential for me is the render in place functionality in Cubase now this does actually render all your uh, inserts if you select it that way um, we're going to be looking for render, let's just search again, render with current settings in the render in place folder. So render, in, uh, I have that one set to alt tilde, 
Um, I've had to change mine around slightly now because I've moved to a Windows uh, machine as opposed to my old Mac. Um, so alt tilt and the render settings I have set to control alt tilt. Um, so this lets me really easily uh, create a new file. Let's say uh, we have a Uh, plugin on here that we want to be able to bounce this down uh, we can very quickly just hit the render in place and that uh, will create a new file with our inserts all rendered as well uh, you do want to make sure just by hitting the settings key at the beginning of a project as well um, I generally have to set to complete signal path but not with the master effects um, you can add a tail if you want and uh, you should probably have this set down to, this will be grayed out now because it's a single file that we're looking at, but if you select multiple files, uh, you can have these mixed down to one file as well. So that's render in place. Now another uh, little keyboard shortcut that I have uh, set up uh, relates to the UI as well, and that's also centered around the tilde key. Um, so this has to do with the zones. Uh, I believe it is called zones, lower zone is what we're looking for. So show hide, left zone, right zone, upper zone, etc, etc. Um, I don't bother with the transport and the upper. I always have the upper one um, enabled most of the time. Um, but what I do like to have on hand is with the tilt key raises and lowers the um, lower zone for me. So I can very quickly from uh, from selecting a file over here, just bring up my display at the bottom. You've got sample controls, chord pads, uh, your mix console as well. It's very easy to just kind of get rid of that. The same goes for the left and right zones. Uh, you will be able to see the right zone right now. Um, it's on an ultra wide screen monitor, but uh, we can look at the left zone here, control, tilt. I have it set up like that, which will just easily get rid of that and make room for whatever I'm doing on this side. So those are some uh, essentials that I use. Uh, there are a few other ones, but these are the ones that I kind of use most of the time. Um, and then we're gonna look at macros in the next video as well and take this a step further uh, and sort of apply multiple functions to single keys as well. Okay, so I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.